Well, in the recent past, we have lots, uh, we've had lots of issues within our environment, all the way from floods and collapsing of buildings to elevated human and wildlife conflict that led to the slaying of the great, great Mohawk and may its soul rest in peace. And then this culminated to the burning of over 100 tons of ivory. Then that begs the question, who is attacking who? Is a human life attacking the environment or is the environment attacking human life? The world is coming to celebrate the World Environment Day on 5th June. And on set today, we have one Dr. Ayub Mashare to put into perspective just how the celebrations are going to go down. The theme for this year and the interesting slogan, going wild for life. And I'm your host, Corazon Safan. Stay with us. Thank you very much for tuning in to KUTV. Give us your feedback on our SMS number 22766, our Twitter handle, that is at underscore KUTV, and another Facebook page, which is Rise Today, and the other Facebook page, which we normally use, that is Kenyatta University Television. Thank you very much, Dr. Ayub. Thank you for gracing our studio today. Going wild for life. Yes. Quite interesting. Where are we going wild for and just how are we going to start going wild here? Uh, what we mean by going go wild for life is that we are supposed to recognize our wild, wild, wild. Uh, by wild here I mean uh, uh, our trees, our nature, because uh, that is where a very important aspect of our life is. Mm -hmm. And going wild means we have to just, each and every one of us, take a responsibility and step in. But we've seen a lot of interesting stuff. For example, the interesting water that showed Nakum at UK exactly what to do with <laughs> every merchandise that was inside. What is happening? Are people just carelessly not taking into account that there is an environment that we need to take care of? Well, uh, those are just people who decided to canalize a river. Mm -hmm. So they, if you look at the river, it has been canalized very well with concrete on the sides. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they did it, of course, there was very little water. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, the building was done quite, some, so quite a while back when environmental laws were not as uh, effective mm -hmm. as, as now. And because of that reason, now when the rains came in torrents, then that is why now it, it just overflew, it overflowed everywhere. Everything. And then it had to enter even into the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a wake-up call that uh, everything that is planned there is not safe. And they need to rethink. It was more of nature reacting into what human beings are doing. And then we have wildlife. We, we had the international community the other day making lots of noise and even fellow Kenyans making lots of noise and wondering just how do you shoot a lion when these are things that, you know, we hold and we cherish, we hold really, you know, close to our hearts. So what, what's happening with wildlife? Of course, nobody has uh, come up to give us a clear explanation why the elephants had to leave the park mm -hmm. and be spotted in Rangata, uh, at uh, the city mochari area, and along Mobasa Road. And attacked somebody. Yes, and even attacked uh, somebody. So nobody has, has, has come out clearly to say what is happening. But of course, uh, uh, we suspect, scientists suspect, that uh, maybe there is an issue of food. There isn't enough food. and. The, the lions are going out to look for food, or maybe because of the developments that are happening along the migratory corridor, mm -hmm. maybe the, the elephants now are feeling that uh, their uh, habitat has been decimated. Mm -hmm. And so they are going out to uh, to other areas, to other areas. Uh, where they were used to before. Oh yes, it is human beings who actually came yeah. to where they, they lived and decided now this is supposed to be marketed an area and said you, you have to stay inside there and then we have to stay on the other side. That is the other issue of, uh, of poaching and um, the theme for this year's World Environment Day is fight against illegal wildlife trade. Is there a point where now we can accept uh, wildlife trade? Yes, of course, uh, we have to ask ourselves, when did this trade become illegal? Of course, something becomes illegal, when, especially on the environmental front, when there are uh, serious repercussions on the environment. Like when we look at wildlife, uh, of course, if we look at how we have come in the past, there is what we call sustainable exploitation, sustainable use of our wildlife resources. If you visit some of our hotels, like Carnival, you realize that you, 
you'll be fed on uh, game meat. On oh, game meat, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. you, you, you find it there. And, and what is come for yes, that? So yes. it's actually acceptable. It, it, there, there, there are some limits that are accepted. But of course, what is happening now is that people have, have a bit of gone wild. Eh? In the wrong and, way, not yes, in the way we are in the wrong way, to yes. Mm -hmm. So they even do not inform the authorities that they want to harvest these wildlife resources. So everybody harvests and uh, keeps those uh, trophies, uh, even trades in the, the, the game meat illegally without uh, informing the authorities. Mm -hmm. And what is happening because uh, uh, the social aspect of the environment, when people, people talk to one another, and so when somebody makes some money out of wildlife trophies, out of game meat, they inform others. And you know the rate of unemployment in this country and poverty is quite high. Mm -hmm. So you realize that many, many people get into that trade. And therefore, the exploitation is not at sustainable levels. And that is why uh, for this year, the World Environment Day, we are telling uh, the public that we, we would like people to stop any illegal activity. Uh, you know that in Kenya, uh, trading in any uh, game trophies, game meat, is illegal. The most difficult bit is that uh, some of these people, they are, they are the communities out there. They look harmless, they live with the wildlife, but they have a lot of indigenous knowledge mm -hmm. about how to kill. How to kill, yes, and yes, how to name these animals, because yes, yes. they have lived with them in the same environment yes, for quite yes, some time. Yes. And that's a big challenge, because right now, you see, you saw the burning of ivory that yes. happened the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is only the ivory that was with the government. How much ivory is with the people? Because the... They, they could be having this ivory, hoping that they will get somebody to sell the ivory to. Mm -hmm. Maybe at a thousand, two thousand, uh, something like that. And there has to be a market. Because these people are hearing the word, yes. there, is, there is a market somewhere, there's oh, yes. a market somewhere, oh, one yes. person whispering to the next. Oh, yes. And the, the poacher might be the indigenous person yes. in the village, yes. but the beneficiaries are at the very top. Yes. Who is buying so our, the, our material products, our actually, raw materials? <laughs> Actually, the mm -hmm. challenge is, mm -hmm. talk about the market. Mm -hmm. Who announces that there is market for, the for wildlife, for wildlife trophies? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the media. You are to blame for this. Uh -huh. Because every time uh, a poacher is arrested, you even ask, what is the value of, of this uh, uh, task that has been uh, confiscated? And normally, the, the figures that are quoted there, they are very exorbitant. Yes, yes, and yes. everyone just wants yes. it. It causes a new kind of hunger. Oh, yes. But which countries are they taken to? Well, we hear. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's the Allegedly. media. Allegedly. It's the media mm -hmm. who tell us that mm -hmm. they go to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. they go to China. Mm -hmm. And so we hear that those are the countries where these illegal mm -hmm. trophies go to. Mm -hmm. yes. Maybe don't you think that if we wanted to really curb this trade, mm -hmm. illegal trade, mm -hmm. then maybe we should stop the market, deal with the market first, so that there is no market to take these things to. Oh, yes, oh, yes. And uh, our government is doing that. You know, we are very active in uh, the international conventions such as CITES, mm -hmm. and uh, where we meet every, every year to discuss issues to do with endangered species. Mm -hmm. And uh, countries are really championing for really looking at which, organ which uh, organisms are, uh, are threatened with extinction and uh, what are the trade uh, levels mm -hmm. and definitely they, they make resolutions about what should be done. And that, that interferes with the market, mm -hmm. yes. And is our hope uh, just now lying on CITES or are we going to uh, implement other radical ways of dealing with, with, with poaching or dealing with these poachers? For example, other people have even, have even suggested before that you shoot on the spot if you find a poacher. Mm -hmm. So are we waiting for CITES to bring effective ways of handling poaching? Having our country being at... Uh, in a zone that is uh, full of conflict, mm -hmm. you know that the poachers have an easy time mm -hmm. because they, they hide uh, within the conflict that is within our region mm -hmm. and that way they are able to propagate mm -hmm. this trade. And uh, so as a country, we need uh, radical measures, mm -hmm. uh, unique to ourselves because uh, wildlife is our livelihood in this country. You know it is our... Uh, uh, the, in terms of income, income for, yes, for, tourist foreign, attraction yes, and for, we have foreign, foreign, uh, foreign, foreign income, yes. uh, it, it is high 
on the on the table. Mm -hmm. And so we need some radical moves. And uh, one of the radical moves that we have taken is uh, we have enacted the Wildlife Act, mm -hmm. where if one is uh, convicted as a poacher, mm -hmm. the, the penalties are very severe. Mm -hmm. And then the challenge that we also have is the communities. Because don't think of a poacher as somebody with a gun. Some of our very harmless communities, community members, they, they do a lot of harm to this wildlife. They are the ones who, who kill the wildlife so that they can sell the game meat, they can collect those trophies and keep them. And keep them And so we food. need a lot of awareness for mm -hmm. them. And what are the ripple effects now of, now, of the, this kind of illegal trade? The impact of illegal trade in wildlife is that uh, we have our numbers, our wildlife numbers, they, they, they decline every day. If you look at the, the way people are harvesting saddlewood, for example, in this country, every day we hear of a truck full of saddlewood harvested from our forests, our natural forests. And this saddlewood is the one that has been, uh, the, the best saddlewood is the one that is uh, over 40 years old. And you see they are not planting mm -hmm. any new saddlewood. Oh, yes. And the way they harvest, the, the tree is killed. That's so, simply depreciating the whole thing. So in terms of the ripple effect, mm -hmm. then we will realize that we don't have uh, any more saddlewood in this country. For the elephant, is the same. We will have doodring numbers, and it will affect our tourism, our tourism industry in a big way. You know, uh, you cannot compensate there enough. There is not enough money yes. that can make them feel yes. it's okay. Yes, yes. So what exactly is uh, the World Environment Day looking to do to achieve uh, to probably mitigate some of these issues? Well, during World Environment Day, wh why we have Environment Days in the mm -hmm. first place mm -hmm. is so that we can uh, heighten the level of awareness mm -hmm. about an issue. For this time, we want to heighten awareness about illegal trade in wildlife. So what, wh where we are targeting is uh, we want to sensitize communities that whatever uh, products they are harvesting from the environment, from the wild, mm -hmm. if they, they, they are not working closely with the government. Whatever is illegal that, that, that they are doing, whatever trade they are doing, uh, they, they will need to really look at that level of harvesting because some of those uh, materials are unique to particular habitats. So uh, if they over harvest, they are going to, to, to enter into a concept which we call developing yourself to death. Mm -hmm. So you develop, find they, get, they make money, but then when the, the, the resources are, uh, are finished, then you die. Then you die because yes. there is nothing else to feed on. Yes. So they need to make their processes more sustainable. More sustainable. Yes. That would actually mean coming into an agreement and helping them also to benefit even a little bit so they can appreciate if they're living with these animals and they face a daily danger or risk, mm. then probably have to come to an agreement with them and give them some, you know, sort of incentives. Actually, actually, mm -hmm. uh, that is a challenge we are posing to them. In Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, now we have the county governments. If you look at uh, an institution such as uh, Giraffe Centre, mm -hmm. Giraffe Centre attracts a lot of tourists. But what is there at Giraffe Centre? It's just giraffes. How many giraffes do we have mm -hmm. in our counties? Mm -hmm. Just roaming. Mm -hmm. Why can't we start many giraffe centres? Our celebrations mm -hmm. will be held in every county. Every county uh, through our uh, county environment officers, county directors of environment, there are events organized in every county. And they are working closely with the county government. So we expect that uh, in every county, the governor will address the gathering. Uh, and then all the, all the stakeholders within that region, the NGOs, the private sector, the mm -hmm. churches, and the most. So one inch should look yes. out for the places where these yes. events are going and the to schools. be. Now, even as we you know, create this awareness and go back to the communities w which are living around these wild animals just to make them feel like they're part of the benefici uh, beneficiaries of the wildlife. What is it that somebody who is watching right now can probably do in the next five minutes to help in solving the whole menace? Um, what everybody should do, because we are really targeting the communities, unless they take action, we will not have succeeded. We are interested with the wildlife corridors and we are making sure that whoever is trying to put any development on the corridor, they must undertake environmental impact assessment. How much uh, population will the world be able to take? And if it cannot take the anticipated number of people, then what exactly are we going to do about that?
what exactly should happen? Should the government regulate the number of children you should have? Thank you very much for keeping it KUTV. I'm Corazon Safan. We have been having Dr. Ayub Masharia, Director Nema, who has put into perspective just how safe, healthy, and good wildlife is good for every Kenyan. Thank you very much indeed. Keep talking to us on our SMS number, that is 22766. Our Facebook page, that is Kenyatta University Television or Rise Today. And our Twitter handle, at KUTV. And my personal Twitter handle as well, that is at Corazon Safan. Thank you very much. Keep having KUTV in your house and have a great day ahead.